Happy Halloween. It's an absurd holiday. Oh yes, putting on costumes and striking fear. Quite absurd. Welcome to the Batman Book Club, a podcast exploring the Dark Knight Library. I am your host, Ryan Lauer. The Batman Book Club is a proud member of the Batman Podcast Network, hosted by Batman on Film. Just go to batmanonfilm.com, click on the Batman Podcast Network tab for a whole list of other Bat-related shows that also love to dive into other nerdy topics we all love to frolic about in our free time. The Batman Book Club is also a member on Patreon. If you like what's going on with the show and you'd like to support it, just go to patreon.com slash the Batman BC. It'll help keep the generators on for the Batcave. Thank you for listening to episode number 81, Bloodstorm. Our final stop in this spooky tour of October with Batman stories. Now, bringing bring back into this to talk about the story. This is the main event, so I had to bring in the main <laughs> event himself. Uh, he's no stranger to this show. He's no stranger to the podcasting world. He's from everything. Let's go. He's a gotta go. It's Justin Kowalski. Hello, Justin Kowalski. Hey, I like when you say everything, let's go. It sounds like a new show called Everything, Let's Go. <laughs> let's go. Everything. Let's go. Everything. Let's go. Let's do it. Hey, man. Um, I'm excited. Glad to have you back. I think you last yeah. time you were on was the, was it the Killing Joke? No, no, no. The 89 Deluxe yes. Edition. Yep. That's right. With uh, yeah, the talked- Sheriff, Ryan Haas. The Sheriff. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know I was the main event. That's a lot of pressure now. Now I'm like, oh crap! I thought these are just all these were all main events. Oh well, that's there. Spoken like a true Justin Kowalski. Aww. These are all main events. Um, I, I like this, that though. This is the big Duke Guru. I wanted to shift it all up a little big bit. Guru. I think what what actually started the order. Um, Haas, he's just going to be the first one out the gate. I think each time, and then mm-hmm. Pete. I wanted Pete on, but. I mean, to have Pete in back-to-back episodes, like, I don't know that the audience can handle that. That's so much much Peter Vera, so I got to split it, so then it became a whole, like, you know what? Justin's main event this year. Maybe next year it'll be somebody else. I don't know. I feel um, like in WrestleMania, like, when finally, like, Triple H made it to the main (laughs) card, I'm like, that's right. He finally got there. Hunter Hearst Helmsley. He He did it. That's right, dude. Oh, my gosh. I I love reminiscing about WWF. Attitude. We era. can we can do the whole show and talk the about game. It. There we go. I was like, wait, hold on. What was he? Yeah. Was the game. The professional a hole, <laughs> dude. A quick quick story. I went to because I went to uh, WrestleMania 2000 and I Ooh. went to Raw is War wow. right after. So like one wow. was at Anaheim and Anaheim, and then the next night was at the Staples Center. And anyways, uh, I I don't know where what venue it was at, but like the news was there because it was a big deal. And yeah. everyone's like, The Rock, yeah, The Rock. This is like when The Rock was like the people's eyebrow just blowing up. I'm the only fool there with a Triple H sign. And I'm like, <laughs> The Rock sucks. The Rock sucks. I love it's all about the game, you know? And then this and guy's like, hey. They're all, get this guy right here. Get this guy right here. And they're like, You don't like The Rock? And I'm like, Nah. I go, I said, The Rock's a cheap imitation of his father. I, I was just I was just saying some crazy stuff, right? Right, right. Oh and, my um, gosh. And I, and I was like, just talking about how, you know, Triple H is the game and he's, you know, he's working his way up the ladder, right? Blah, blah, blah. Oh, yeah. It had to be the night of WrestleMania because he he won at WrestleMania. So I was like, said, he's going to he's gonna win the night and all that stuff. Anyways, the uh, <laughs> I got on the news. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and every, like, people they interviewed, they're like, oh, you know, John Smith from Anaheim, California. And for me, it just said crazed wrestling fan. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, I wish I had Accurate. that video, man. Anyways, I was you like, you know what? Do you think that Hunter Hearst Helmsley was in the back? He saw that and he was like, what the hell's wrong with this guy? <laughs> oh, I think <laughs> he gave, he him, the gave, him the, gave him the, just the edge, I think, to just drop yeah. some pedigrees. And, and win the belt. So <laughs> yeah. that's how I look at um, it. I remember that WrestleMania because that was the year that I finally like dove in, nose oh, diving like, right into uh, wrestling. And that that main event that year was there was a McMahon in every corner. Yeah. 
That it was. I remember that one is the big show, The Rock, Triple H, and who was the fourth? Oh, the man, fourth was me. Mankind. Mankind was back? Yeah, yeah, was yeah that's right. right. Yeah. I think so. It was Big Show, Rock, uh-huh. uh Triple H, the man, yeah. and, and Mankind. Mankind. Yeah. It was that Linda McMahon was in Mankind's Corner. Yeah. So, we, so much yeah. drama. Wow. The good yeah. times, you know? Yeah. Ugh, the good old days. Yeah. Mr. Sacco. All right. So there's your WWE yeah. update. Um, you're, right. reminis- you're reminiscing. <laughs> let's let's dive into now, Justin. Yeah. The, uh, Batman Bloodstorm. Bloodstorm. <laughs> Written by Doug Mitch. Illustrated yes. by Kelly Jones. It was released mm. in 1995. Oh my gosh. What was I doing? I know. It's been released in a hardcover. It's been released in uh, different trade paperbacks. It's been collected in an Elseworlds trade paperback with the other Mm -hmm. Batman Vampire series. It's available digitally. Sadly, it is not available on DC Universe Infinite. I found that out. (laughs) (laughs) Well, there we go. Which version did you read for this episode? I actually downloaded the Elseworlds uh, on Comixology. Justin Kowalski. I know. Well, so oh did my... I. Yo, Except on Hoopla. Shoot. Except on Hoopla, oh. but still. My is Hoopla it on Hoopla? Hat. It sure it is. Was... Oh, okay. But you still got it. <laughs> you still bought it. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, I, I got oh. it th- or checked it out through Hoopla, the oh, Elseworlds gotcha. book that has all three of these yeah. vampire stories. Oh, okay. The same, the same version. Gotcha. Oh, yeah. You, got your, you did it smart. And... So, so same as these mostly. <laughs> the Hoopla app. I was, th- I, I was like, dang it. I need to go to the library and get that card. <laughs> the, the Batman Book Club is not sponsored by Hoopla. Yeah, but it may be. as well be, you know, because yeah. I cannot push this app enough. It's got everything that you need. Uh-huh. So you read uh, yeah. it digitally. Yes. Okay. Good for you. Do you uh, remember the first time that you read Batman Bloodstorm? No. <laughs> no. Nope. Uh, I thought I did. Like mm-hmm. there was some vague familiarity to the story. Um, I was like, did I read this? I don't I don't like it, it was like, have I read this or have I not read this? The Joker seemed very familiar. But other than that. Mm-hmm. It's been it's been if it, if I did read it, it was years ago, and so this, it felt very fresh. It just, felt like a fresh blood. Do it. This is yeah. for Pete Vera every episode. It's been oh. a while. Uh, it's been a while. <laughs> yeah. So I don't think so. For anybody who um, didn't listen last year, we did the the Batman Spooky Month all of October last year, and Justin Kowalski yes. was on, and we did Red Rain. That was episode number twenty four, and I don't know if at the point that we recorded i'd said it but afterward i did the same thing check this out in hoopla mm-hmm. and the same elseworlds volume and i continued and read all the entire book so last year was the first time that i read bloodstorm mm. so uh i don't know how i missed this all the way up until the ripe age of 33 years old <laughs> in 2020 uh <laughs> But yeah, last that was that was the first time that I read it. So it was also good because I didn't really remember like you that Joker looked familiar. But then I just thought maybe I'm mixing in Kelly Jones on other books with Riddler or I'm sorry, with Joker. Joker. Oh, uh, but me. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But yeah. then also, I don't think I've seen another Joker like this. Uh, yeah. When I asked you to come back for the to celebrate the spooky Halloween season, um. I know I withheld that you were going to be the main event, but why did you did choose? <laughs> why did you choose Bloodstorm? Um, well, I don't know. I, I thought it would be a good uh, continuation, and it would guarantee me a third spot next year. I was really planning out my year <laughs> for 2022. <laughs> I was like, man, I want to come back. So now Ryan can't have me because a, it would be weird to skip a year, right? <laughs> He's got to come. Gotta come <laughs> no, back. I don't. All right, there we go. It, it actually because it, it to me it felt like there was. Lack of, I don't know. It felt like there was going to be some work put into this. It's not like mm-hmm. I could just show up and be like, oh, I know this story I want to talk about. I wanted to sit down and, and experience something a little creepy because uh, mm-hmm. it's October. And I, I really it's so hard with kids to sit down and get creepy because yeah. they're not ready for certain things. And my wife <laughs> hates all creepy things unless, you know, it's a forensic file or something. There's certain things she'll watch. It's just it's hit or miss. So gotcha. I'm like, I want to get creepy right now. And it gave <laughs> me a chance to get creepy. And so uh, it's something about I would have preferred a book actually it just feels better it feels like more i don't know a little more like dickens this you know it's cold uh, i have a book i'm drinking tea there's a candle light a candle but i lit a candle in my bed 
called the iPad. <laughs> it lit up my face <laughs> multiple times. My wife's, can you turn the cover? It's yeah. <laughs> the room is glowing yeah. with your gothic uh, air. So um, well, that's anyways. for Kelly Jones. You got to go goth. Like you should have painted yeah. your nails black too. All for Kelly oh, Jones. Yeah. You know he likes the goth. I the goth. Well, look. I put I put Bauhaus on the next day. You know. So oh, okay, well there you go. <laughs> no, so, that's all good. It, yeah, but it, yeah, it, man. I, I don't know. Just to continue the the tradition. Sure, it's cool. Hey, you're not alone either because I mean, uh, Ryan Haas last year, he, he, when I asked him to come on, he listed two stories in which he picked, he picked the one and was like, I guess next year I'm going to do the other one. P he's going through the haunted night collection. Uh, Mm -hmm. he's done two of those. Uh, so he'll be back next year for the third one of those. So, um, Garrett's the wild card. Um, and by wild card, Garrett can barely handle anything. Yeah. (laughs) It's like, oh, blood. <laughs> Garrett would have died if he if he read this book. He he, he could not have handled the 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 horror and sexiness of Batman. <laughs> the horror so, and sexiness. Oh, uh, last I year because remember oh, last year he did Little Gotham. <laughs> yeah, a charming, charming book. It, no, it's great. I it was love just that it's, book. it just shows you the, the scale a of like Batman stories, but also the but threshold you... <laughs> that Garrett can handle. I mean, I think we went. <laughs> Oh, man, I think you were before his. And so, mm-hmm. yeah, he went from Red Rain to Little Gotham. <laughs> I mean, what a yeah. what a juxtaposition there. But yeah. um, but very to cool. pull back. Can we pull back the bat curtain a little bit? Absolutely. Right? Let's do this. Because I did suggest another story and we'll get to it later. Hmm. Remember, there was a story. Of a man named Brady. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Oh, OK, but um, um you're hmm. like, oh, now you forgot. And I was like, oh, man, we're got, we got to do that. Story. Oh, no, no, no. I, I know. Yeah. That's right. Yes, okay. you did yeah. suggest that story. And I think yes. I. Yeah. And we came to let's keep the earth theme of vampires. But the other one is cemented. Yes. It is yours. Yes. Uh, but yeah, but it was it had a horror tinge to it. It did. That one. I've only read. <laughs> <laughs> that one I've only read once, too. So that'll be great when we cover that one again. Uh, oh, man, it's so good. All right. So Batman Bloodstorm. Uh, yes. It picks up, I'd say, pretty maybe not exactly immediately after the events of red rain. Yeah. Um, to it really serves you well. If you read red rain before this, I think you could dive into Bloodstorm, and you could follow mostly, but I, I wouldn't recommend it. I'd recommend you read blood rain or red rain. Yeah. It, it just it helps. It's all, it's seamless then, but yeah, I mean, pretty much picks up not long after that in which, Batman, he's he is a vampire now, and yeah. he stumbles across a dead body in an alley in which a woman has three different sets of puncture wounds in her neck. Yes. And they're all different in which he says, oh, no, I didn't get all of them. And yes. that's where we pick up Bloodstorm. Now, that's right. let's take it away, Justin. How do you want? How, why don't you just go first? How do you want to approach the story? Um, what do you want to talk about first? I actually one of the one man we always we said this last year I think we still have a hard time with saying Doug's name is it Munch is it Moinch all right so I know that <clears throat> okay. and last year we resulted in Doug M yeah uh, Doug M but I did look up and he did an intro for somebody's podcast and he himself said Mench Mench so Doug, Doug Mench, Mench okay. said Mench so that's okay, what I'd I'm going to go with mention <laughs> oh there it hey, is oh uh, man I love the internal dialogue for Batman in this story. Uh, yes, I, I felt, yeah, man, it was okay. Some, some of it was very expository, but it felt like a, um, cause this, first off, this story isn't like set in like the 1800s. It's kind of like contemporary, but it has this like, uh, you know, like again, Charles Dickens ish feel yeah, of like, almost like you Victorian know, slightly yeah, Victorian, that's, look. There you but, go. But there's nothing in there. It's not like they have a TV on that's playing uh CSI Miami or anything yeah. like that. So it can play out kind of timeless. Yeah. So I love Batman's like lamenting uh-huh. going on in the, the story His like his struggle of, of like, I, I want the thirst or I have this thirst. It's going to consume me. You know, I'm grateful for this power, but I lament the desire of blood. Like all, all of this, all of Batman processing that stuff was really cool. It was a good like um, next step if you're going to do a story yeah. like this. You know, like you kind of didn't need to do one, but the last one was so good. Like, okay, cool, let's 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 continue on. And so I really loved the approach, and it just 
I think he's actually, Mensch is really underrated, I think, when you talk about Batman runs, because he was on the main Batman book for a good while, too. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, he was part of that British punk rock invasion of Batman writers, like him and Alan Grant. Um, great Batman comics, you know. Um, don't miss those if, if you're going through, like, DC. Um, infinite! DC <laughs> infinite. So, so yeah, I, re- I really like that. Um, I love his, I just loved his storytelling. And again, when, when Batman's talking, I don't want to skip too far, but like when Batman gets to Ariana, it be, it's kind of tropey, but I loved the breakdown of the moon. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I, I'm trying not to do too many spoilers and stuff, but like, I love that. I was like, oh my gosh, bro, you went, you went and did some work and the, it made, it did make sense to me mm-hmm. as a reader. Right. And uh, mm-hmm. she's trying to make sense to Batman. He's like, okay, fine. <laughs> like he needed some type of like logic to explain, you know, why the moon would have an effect on people. Um, but yeah, man, I, I don't know. I, I just really enjoyed this story. There was a couple things that I, I giggled at. Okay. You know, well, let's, let's first, yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to yeah. tag on, Take me uh, back. jump on. Okay. So I love the Ariane or I'm sorry. I don't know how you would pronounce that name. It's I, a, I've been calling her Ariane. Ariane. Okay. Ariane. Um, her and then Bruce's internal like struggle. Yeah. So first off, I'll just say with her, I love that part because it's definitely having you check, you know, because we're nerds, we're reading and we're, we're checking to see if it does add up into yeah. other, uh, other mediums of horror figures of like, yeah. you know, Dracula and werewolf and stuff like that. And how full moons play in that. And it's like, yeah, that adds up. Yeah, that adds up. Oh, that could explain how this works with that. And I just, yeah, I really liked that explanation. Cause though sometimes I don't need, Hey, I just know that when it's a full moon, somebody uh, with lycanthropy, they turn into a werewolf. Yeah, like, I'm good, but it's cool that like this, this does not taint that understanding at all either so yeah i agree that i thought all of that was really cool bruce's struggle that was actually like one of my main highlights with this and i even wrote down on my my notes is just bruce's interior struggle because it is the the last book if they never followed it up it's okay they ended it they they ended that story and you could play it out in your head however you wanted to Mm -hmm. and and like with whatever they closed up all the uh directions well This one's great because it is like, okay, well, how would Bruce react being a vampire now? Yeah. Oh, it sucks. (laughs) But I'm (laughs) (laughs) sure it it sucks, though. And we get to hear all this. And I also love that they do the interior monologue in cursive. Mm -hmm. I know kids these days don't know cursive, but this is cursive, folks. Uh, (laughs) All of that and the struggle with it and how he can't cross that line because he's like, no, I, I won't cross this line. And there's in particular... In this, it says it's page 132 of the book, but Bruce, he's just killed one of the uh, and beheaded one of the um, vampires in the cemetery. And then he's walking on his own and the moon's in the back and that that middle panel, he's going over this like rocky bridge and it just says death mocks me. Life tempts Mm -hmm. me. Thirst haunts me. And together the three curse me. And I'm like, that's. That's like the freaking tagline for this book, I think, mm-hmm. because a good story needs to have, you know, emotion and get you caring about the main character. And this is like, of course, he didn't want to die. He had to really up his game to defeat Dracula, in which he did. And this was what happened as a result. He still thinks he can do good, but it's like he's got these barriers that are just more and more difficult. And I just thought that that yeah. was I love that aspect of the whole book. No, agreed, agreed. It it definitely got into the psychology of a vampire Batman, and which I never knew I wanted. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> but, I mean, it, that's the thing. Like with these Elseworlds, sometimes it's like, oh, it's fun. But I, I was actually really digging this, like, like uh, uh, this next chapter in mm-hmm. you know Vampire Batman. Now, like, spoilers. Like, I know the third one isn't revered. <laughs> the, th- the third uh, entry into oh, Crimson Mist these- isn't. Okay. No. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But uh, we'll see. Maybe we'll like it. We'll find out next year. <laughs> next on the year. Club <laughs> trailer. <laughs> Maybe we won't be the main event. Maybe we'll just kick it off. <laughs> but no, no, a hundred percent. The the bat Batman's Batman's struggle for for blood. 
but what I what I did like is that a non uh, vampire Batman still has that struggle of loneliness, and mm-hmm. I loved like there was still like that that you know you know classic Batman struggle of like I have to do this alone. I'm a loner. I'm by myself. Um, there's no Bruce Wayne in this book. Only a couple panels. Like homeboy lays in bed <laughs> in his whole Batman gear. You yeah. know, like you you only get a couple panels of Bruce in here. Um, he is Batman. And that's that's kind of his curse. Yeah. You know, he has Dracula's curse that has really made him a Batman now. And that was really it, it was a, it was really um, interesting how he, he continues to process that. And like, how do I get out of this? How how can I cure myself? And then we get to. There's two, there's you, two ways. Which way we're going to which way you want to go here? You take right, we're on, choose your own adventure. Bruce Wayne. Bat is is no more. He is no more. He's Batman, but he he's lonely. He needs some comfort. So why not bring in Selena? The Joker. Kyle? No. <laughs> <laughs> ah! Hey, I got you. Yeah, uh, yeah Selena Kyle, man. Uh, so this, I think, I struggled with this part of the story. Okay, I felt it was kind of um, a little hammy, um, but I also know like what, what's the next? What's the next thing you gotta do if you're gonna? Lean into Batman's world. The first one didn't. The first one was all about Dracula. Now yeah. we're leaning into Batman's like rogues gallery. And so we have we have the Joker, which we'll get to because um, I really loved the Joker in this book. Um, but then we, if Batman needs like some type of pure love, mm-hmm. of course, you bring, you know, Selena Kyle into it. And it was I didn't I didn't remember because I don't, again, I don't remember like reading this. That she turns into a, like a, a were cat, a were cat. Yes, <laughs> yes. And I was like, I mean, it, it did have a very Batman Returns, you know, feeding the cats on yeah. her mm-hmm. body, like, like kind of horror element. Um, I don't know if Tim Burton saw this and like, oh, that's great because this predates, you know. Oh no, it doesn't. It, it came out after. Maybe they were inspired. They watched by Batman Tim Returns. Sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. They were like, oh, there Batman Returns. Let's do that. Maybe it's a little nod, but um. They had penguin turning into a duck, but we're like, nah, this is going way too far. <laughs> we can't, we can't do that. Let's do. Selena turns into a cat. Let's do that. Batman's like, I must fight a mallard. <laughs> so it is, and it was very uh like cheesecake. Like I mean, Kelly Jones does that a lot, but there was a lot of like poses. Like she's on a rock. Like oh, I guess her her gown just slipped off. It just slipped little. off, and she yeah. is flat out like. We're not we're trying to be respectful, but come on, you turn you yeah. look at that page and she is just perking her booty up and out <laughs> like, hey, here it is. It's like, wait, whoa. Anybody Kelly uh, Jones. <laughs> yeah, Kelly Jones, everybody. Yeah, there <laughs> you, you go. go. Okay. Uh, yeah, but, things, I mean, and things just disappear on this lady at some point. You're like, oh, well, there's some cats and there she, you go. She got bit. Um, she so got bit by her collarbone. The, and somehow that the stripped part all that made me clothes. laugh. Though it reminded okay. me of that Batman the Animated <laughs> Series episode where she turns into a cat. What's the name of that? I don't know the name of that episode, but it got me laughing. You know, especially when mm-hmm. Batman's all a, a, a cat woman, <laughs> a cat woman. I, See, like I'll at that point I heard Adam West cat woman <laughs> strings and my belt. <laughs> I I I totally get the inclusion of her because. In Red Rain was a will they won't they with the Tanya woman uh, mm-hmm. and they didn't. And I'm actually kind of glad that they didn't. So here it would make sense that they're like, well, let's include a love interest this time around. And I mean, yeah. who are we going to go to? Let's go to Selena and including her in the way that they do. I mean, we're already dealing with vampires to which made me feel a little like, OK, I'll go along for the ride. It's Selena. Uh, yeah. Oh, look, as she turns into a cat. I mean, we're in a world with vampires and werewolves so sure why the hell not and yeah i do i do like the what she brings to the story though because yeah it doesn't i don't don't think that it fully is organic i definitely feel like somebody said we have to put selena in or they're like we're gonna make selena fit uh because Mm -hmm. it seems like she just quickly out of nowhere is like let me help you yeah what why why do you want to? But OK. And then what is it? What does she bring to him? Just someone to lay with. Yeah. In which it's kind of like, I don't know, but then try to be they, they need some rom- romanticizing because that goes with goth, like with gothic yeah. settings. And so that's what I feel like they're really going with for the story. So you have to add that the sexualness like they did. They did that yeah. with Red Rain. 
and stuff yeah. too. So, so here they can step crank it up a notch with Selena and a more intimate relationship there. Uh, yeah. So that kind of made sense to me. And I'm just a fan of Selena and I liked her interpretation here too, to where I was like, sure, I'll go along for the ride. Yeah. And and here's the thing. I don't, I didn't mind that with Selena again. It makes sense. I just don't, yeah. I, I wish it was a little more of a forbidden relationship for it to be even more of uh, tragic. Like I was like, Oh man, it would have been, I think it would have been a lot more powerful if she was like a nun who couldn't, like engage in this relationship with Batman, but oh, felt okay. like I need to care for him. And then she turns and there is, they break, they, you know, she has to break her vow. He breaks his like loneliness vow. And that's what kind of would give them this power over vampires, especially like when, when, you know, we head into the church area, I thought, man, if Batman's, you know, sought like refuge there, which is funny because, you know, for a vampire and he's like, Oh, I'm pure of heart. The crosses yeah. and all that stuff don't hurt me because I ain't trying to like murder people. Right. Mm-hmm. And so I, I, and I don't want to, I, I don't, again, I don't want to critique a book that isn't the, isn't, isn't what I thought would have been great. Yeah. I was just thinking, man, if there was a little bit of un like, <laughs> like forbidden love, I think that would have dealt more with the tragic nature of the story because she was just a rando to be honest. Yeah. yeah. Don't, we don't even know where she was walking home from. She's just mm-hmm. walking home. Right. Yeah. So, like, I didn't give her, like, what is her purpose in the story beyond being just, like, love? Like, oh, Batman's Catwoman's destiny type of thing, right? Hey, that's valid. And so... It's valid. Yeah. Don't be hard on yourself, okay? Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> yeah. <valid>. But, <laughs> so, anyways, I, w- I, I was just hoping there was a bit, would have been something that would have rooted her into, you know, this story. So, sure. I don't know, like, it's... But, yeah, so you, you get the history with the Joker, but he doesn't have any history with this Selena Kyle and this, like, telling of Batman. So, mm-hmm. anyways... That was just my own my my criticism. Other than that, yeah, I loved I loved everything else. Um, I just thought some the <laughs> this the way to get her into a wear cat was kind of funny. But yeah, it's it's horror, you know. You got bats and cats living together. Mass hysteria. Mass uh, hysteria. So, anyways, there's my. Uh, I'm I'm with you. My, I get it, and I think that that's it's semi related to how I just said of definitely feels like we're gonna put her in this story. Damn it. Yeah. And yeah. force that instead of any kind of hints from red rain that carried over anything like that. So I think that that's valid. And yeah, carrying a little bit more of that, that tragic would have had a harder or the tragic uh, love story, or whatever with that, yeah. like you'd said, yeah, that would have been like, that would have been cool. I think it was cool that they, when she turned into where cat that yeah. they definitely nodded to the, the full on purple suit. Like I thought that was kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, for sure. Like that it, it, again. And now the purple suit was what was, you know, prevalent during this time. So, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, like once once the transformation, and everything happened, it was cool. It it, it wasn't bad. It, I was just like, where did she come from? And mm-hmm. then. But there's, yeah, no, I, I, I like there's that. some images like there's one where she's crawling in the panel. I'm showing <laughs> you and I'm like, yes. man, that could have been like a Danzig music video or something. <laughs> right <laughs> but it's it's funny but it's also it's i don't know it's cool it works They're like overall it is like you said it's horror uh yeah and now we can finally hit on the joker mr j himself mr j this surprise is not my favorite design of the joker <laughs> really i think he well, looks kind of strange but he also like you said fits with the it's timeless, but fitting with that timeless time period, if so to speak, yeah. of the the top hat and the the suit, and then the hair is longer to where that does fit for it, it does work for this style. Yeah. Oh, I loved. It. I thought he he was he evoked Gary Oldman's Dracula. Yeah. You know? There you go. Mm-hmm. Even though he's not a blood sucker, he's sucking the blood of Gotham, and so I oh. like that. That yeah, I, I loved that uh, interpretation of him. You know, uh, a longer-haired Joker. You know, it, it was he, he definitely was creepy. And Kelly Jones, this is his wheelhouse. It's it just there is this weird like I don't want to say it's inconsistent. I think it's just his storytelling choices where things can be very cartoony, and then they can get like oh that's very realistic within between panels. Mm-hmm. Um, and he does that a lot with especially how he uses blacks and lines and stuff like that. You get these. Like very informed, 
kind of cinematic shots like a lot of it i was like oh that is dracula or that's the man who laughs like the classic like yeah you know silent film that inspired the look of the joker i think Mm -hmm. you get a lot of definitely at stuff like that um it's hard for me to tell you page numbers because not everything has a page number on here you know but um yeah they're they're I, i i like the visual uh representation of the joker here i thought it was creepy but more than that i loved his dialogue man <laughs> again i thought it was the, you can tell the that cre- these these two guys mench and jones are fans of dracula by all the yeah. nuns. like you just said too of how many how many panels can look like the man who laughs in dracula influence yeah. for sure and the shadows they play with as well as and then mench with like the um with the dialogue and like the one part he says, Oh, children of the night, where are you? And it's like, ah, yeah. okay, yeah. cool. Um, I, I like all those. It's not a, eh, eh, do yeah. you get it? Yeah. Yeah. But if, if you know, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I just loved all of the, I, I, I want this to be a story that they do on like one of those audio dramas. I think it just, it, 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 it lends itself to that. I think, um, all right, plasma perverts. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> plasma perverts. Plasma nice. per- per- I, Yeah, it's, but only a Joker can say something like that. Of course, and it not be. It's not corny. It's like, oh, dude, he's just a sadistic, freaking murder clown. So, and, and I love that's his inclusion for the story. It's like he missed out on a lot of fun, which was the last yeah. book. Joker doesn't like that. He likes to be. He likes to join the party. Uh, yeah. So, and that's how we kick like it's pretty close to the beginning of the story too of mm-hmm. he's tracking down the the leftover vampires he comes armed yeah. with holy water and a cross mm-hmm. and basically just kind of tells them like hey i'll be your i'll get i'll do the things you can't do yeah and in the process what does he want he's basically to turn all the gotham mob people and all the the criminals and stuff to vampires and he gets to run the show yeah and i think that's I, that totally works for the story. That seems, I mean, just in that, uh, on that story level, it works like that. That's a total Joker thing. It gives him something to do for the story. It gives Batman, uh, another hurdle, you know, and it, it just all around worked for me with the Joker. So yeah. no, it, it's not my favorite design of the Joker, but not to a point of like, gosh, it's the worst thing I've ever, or anything like that. Just not yeah. my favorite, but the Joker as the character himself, like totally works. Mm-hmm. For yeah, me. yeah, I I really liked it. it was I was like, man, it, this th- we talked about action figures last time. I think <laughs> I feel like we did, or black and white figures or something. I'm like, man, mm. I want a vamp. I want a I want a Batman bloodlust. What was that? What the, what's this one called? The kid? Bloodstorm. <laughs> Blood bloodlust. <laughs> bloodlust and red lust. Oh, <laughs> I want that Joker figure. I don't know, man. I just. I mean, they did. I they finally it. did a Funko of Batman Red Rain. Why don't they, they broaden did. that? People know the Red Rain story. Let's cash yeah. in on that a little bit. Come a on, Todd, Mc, Todd McFarlane. Come on. Oh, this is this right. Is, this is ripe for Todd McFarlane. This is perfect I hope he for does you, it next Todd. year. You got he this. loves Batman variants. Yeah. Uh, I, I, so Joker was was excellent. Um, I didn't have an. I actually didn't have an issue the entire time with you know how you, you know like I just critique <laughs> Selena Kyle's yeah. story. I was just into it and he was in it enough. It wasn't like it was too much Joker. I thought it was well balanced. Um, you know how they incorporated him in the story. I love that. He was, I love that. He didn't even think Batman was real. Even when he's in the the lady club, he's like, <laughs> he's like I got to get out of here. This place is kinky. Like I actually <laughs> bought that. Like, Oh, Batman's dead. This is weird. You know? Cause he makes mention uh-huh. that he didn't think it was a real thing. And then until he sees him and he's not, then he's like surprised and it's like, well, I guess I got to kill him again. You know? <laughs> Like that's Joker's approach to like, yeah. oh, okay, well, the the fun's extended for me because I need to vanquish exactly. my you know mortal enemy. So cool. he's excited that this. Batman is a vampire. Yeah, it's, it's like, like oh, dude, this is fun. This is good. Yeah, you said something. With, you commented on something with visuals uh, earlier too. Man, Kelly Jones really stepped it up on like the gore. Yeah, in this too. Did. Like it, it gets a little, it gets a little gnarly, and I mean that in such a good way. Garrett can't read yeah. this one at all. No, Garrett, Garrett, don't read this, Garrett. You won't feel the <laughs> handle have, it. You'll, he will have nightmares. Uh, be fetal I mean, position, Garrett. <laughs> the the guy that's like he cr- opens up his shirt and his stomach's exposed, and he pulls out his own heart. Um, the way he another vampire just rips a face off of another guy, like 
God, it's this is uh, this is violent. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this this is the skin ripping. The skin ripping. <laughs> oh man, the skin ripping was definitely like creepy. Um, permission for yeah, Kelly Jones to just um do his creepiest work. Um and bloody. There was so much blood. There was a few times where the blood it looked like they added it afterwards because it didn't mm-hmm. feel mm. like it was part of the artwork, to be honest. Gotcha. Um but um yeah, I mean whatever. Like I I that kind of popped. That was towards the end, I feel like there was some stuff, but yeah. Um I good think, stuff. Good stuff. I, I think the, the Jones, horror it was great. Jones does such a good job of he doesn't feel like his art definitely is not realistic to me in you know in any way. Uh mm-hmm. it's like, oh yeah, this is he's embracing the medium of comic books. But he mm-hmm. can draw some stuff that when the monster or when the werewolf bites Selena, yes, it just makes me cringe. Because of just the, those teeth, maybe it's because we see in the panel right before it all like how big those teeth are, and then we yeah. s- just imagine how much is in her. It's almost like that's a that's just like a quick like ooh, just in yeah. looking at that, which makes me laugh too because it's this is an <laughs> illustration, this is a common the word, and yeah, Ralph it goes rump. Yeah, don't we all? Like we all get Ralph. that that cheeseburger <laughs> from McDonald's, and we go rump, and we take a bite, <laughs> <laughs> and then later on too. I don't know which one I feel for, but when Batman uh, takes a bite of a rat. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like that's that was gross, bro. Like blood's gross, but rat blood. He, it's gross because he I mean, I, and I don't know which part makes me cringe even more. And the fact of like feeling the whole. The poor rat getting eaten yeah. or being the one that has a live rat in his mouth and he chomps something like that. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's actually making me real sick. <laughs> All right. Well, let's keep talking about it. So <laughs> then, so gross. Uh, but I feel, I'm glad I felt, you brought it up because it was I, one thing I was I wanted to say. I was like, oh, man, Batman got so desperate. Maybe I feel know? for it because I like, you know, my life is embedded in Ninja Turtles, too. So I was just feeling. Oh, there you go. Or Not all rats Temple are bad, Jin. man. Templeton. Oh. <laughs> Watch the Suicide Squad. All the rats. You know? Oh, <laughs> yeah. But it, but it, but that thing showed like Batman still was trying to fight his urge for you know yeah for blood. He didn't want to hurt a person. He's like, let me find a rat. <laughs> but yeah. then it's like, oh, what did I do? <laughs> like the guilt. Of, like I don't know if he felt it was like he felt bad for eating the rat, or if he just felt bad for like like caving in. So much that you're so desperate that you'll do anything for blood. Like (laughs) suck rat blood. (laughs) That's, that's actually how I took it. Funny, but yeah, yeah, that's how I took it was the fact that he was disappointed that like he crossed that line. And I mean, that's on a human level. That's so relatable too, where you give into a craving, no matter how minor it is like, no, I don't need a fourth can of Mountain Dew today. I drink it. It tastes good. And then I'm like, God, Girl, why did I do this? <laughs> why did I do this? <laughs> Sorry, mom. It's do you like, think this has any do? relation to Frank Miller writing in Robin eating a rat in All Star Batman and Robin? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely inspired. Frank Miller's like Doug Minch did it. I'm gonna do it too. <laughs> oh gosh, it's worse that Robin ate a rat because he wasn't a vampire boy. He's yeah, a bird. He's a, he's a, <laughs> he's a he's bird, bird boy. <laughs> yeah. Tweet tweet. <laughs> Uh, tweet, tweet on the street. I mean, what else? I'm not trying to like cut it short, but I mean, we've hit unless we dissect like the story more, which I don't think we need to. But I mean, Gordon gets a little bit more to do here than he did in Red Rain, which is cool. Uh, yeah, uh, definitely, good ally. Sure. Yeah, I like the mob, the the mob and the gang, like um, bringing those characters in, mm-hmm. uh, expanding Gotham out a little bit more there. Um, yeah, yeah, I think everyone served their purpose well. Alfred did. Um, Alfred's the one character in this book who was such an inconsistent, like, visual. Um, yeah. Just, I feel like his face got puffier and puffier towards the end. Like, you have shots uh, where he looks, you know, again, Kelly Jones inconsistent in his his character renderings because I think he just, whatever the panel requires. If it's silly, then he'll go a little silly. If it's sexy he'll go sexy if it's goofy he'll go goofy like i mean look at his his know. joker too he has i mean when they're in the church uh mm-hmm. i mean we were just talking about you said how he looked like gary oldman in dracula and then he go towards yeah. the end there in the church he's got like an 80s david bowie sort of 
yeah. like, haircut going on too, in which the Joker would be one that gets all uh, prettied up for, you know, when he's hosting a gig, when he's got Batman yeah. coming and stuff. But I mean, that and his shape where he is thinner, but then also he's boxier. So I totally feel like you with that coat. and how Alfred, unless I'm projecting, but I feel like Alfred, he can look really plumpy at times yeah. too. And it's like, no, well, Alfred's a look skinny at page fella. 165. <laughs> look at page 165, Alfred. That's kind of a you know, okay. pretty standard Alfred look, right? You know, you got his little pencil thin mustache. He just looks like an old dude. I mean, it's again in Kelly Jones style. And then you go just the next page over and you're like, wait, what? Where did all the, the walnuts come from? You weren't eating them in the previous panel, but now they're all in your cheeks, you know, <laughs> like the next page over. It's definitely um, just a weird, a, a weird take, you know, <laughs> it, if, if I had to it'd be critical, right? I'm trying to think of like maybe little Homer Fuddish, like from his nose yeah, to his it's, chin and it's stuff. Weird. Yeah. But then you have like these really beautiful images of Selena on that same page. Like, yeah. look, you know, she looks, it's, it's a great take. And mm-hmm. then you get the weird, like Alfred, like, yeah, very Warner brothers animation. Like, so there's, <laughs> there's these weird, they are those weird, like, choices and and you know to me it's just that's just kelly jones style yeah and i really like it it's not like my preferred like um look like when he was illustrating the batman book um <laughs> i believe with mensch right mm-hmm. he it wasn't my favorite because it's not a batman classic story like contemporary batman art it doesn't really fit it fits this story perfectly because yeah. it's weird and uncomfortable to look at at times um all his batman covers in the 90s and stuff were very much felt like oh is batman a horror book mm-hmm. <laughs> like but it was he was actually very questionable to me for the nightfall so- series right yeah that's right you like, told me about covers, that and i remember yeah. that it those covers when i saw those scared the hell out of me yeah because it didn't match the interiors, like mm. having classic Jim apparel art in the, the first, you know, half of that series, like, Oh, this is just classic superhero storytelling. The cover mm-hmm. says this is a weird horror, you know, like Bane has, you know, a hundred sets of ribs and, yeah. <laughs> and things like that, you know? Um, any, anyways, like I, it, it's important to have an artist match the story and the story works here. So the weirdness, the inconsistencies actually is part of the weirdness of the story, I think. Um, yeah. So I, I, I can make like I can make allowances for it <laughs> because I think you've you've mentioned that before too, and I think that that is a good point that I received when they when they collected the Mensch Kelly Jones run in two volumes, and I'm not sure if there's another one that's going to come out or not. It was instant bias for me because that was a, a run that I really early on in reading Batman that I liked a lot, but it's definitely not. It's still as as many good things as I have to say about it. I it's not like the top level Batman stories for me either. And I think, like yeah. you said, of you know monthly monthly art for Kelly Jones on the main a main story like that, it doesn't work as well as this contained three book universe of yeah. This is pure Kelly Jones atmospherics yeah. designs and everything, or it's all all him. Yeah. You sure. got it. Um, I again, and I mentioned this on the last episode, I believe the coloring still doesn't work for me. OK. Um, I would have wished they had a limited color palette here, except for like characters like Joker. Joker needs to be purple and green. But I think it would have made that a little more moody if they just kind of limited the palette here. And I think it would have worked better for the story is all um, I, I wanted more reds. Um Sometimes you just have weird gradients in there that just don't work for me. Um, so there's okay. that. I I would have I would have le- I would have preferred that. I think that would have helped with the creepiness of the story, but hmm. didn't ruin the story. It just it just it's I don't know, man. I, and those certain things I just can't escape when reading a story. How I think, oh man, that would have served it better if they did that. Not like I know better. Just my I, it, it comes from preference, and that's all yeah. it is. So. I don't think yeah. it it doesn't bother me. It it definitely feels like of its time. Yeah, no, for sure it does. And for me, that's part of a charm for it. But okay. now you have me thinking 
<laughs> Sorry. Of if I look at this, I'm gonna be laying in bed tonight and be like, you know what? Hmm. Yeah. If they'd have shaded this a little different, or if they'd have colored this yeah. a little, uh, I some get things you. that I think were some things I think that are cool. Let's go back to praise. Okay. I love Batman's like silver wooden covered bat daggers. Those yeah. are freaking cool, man. Poor Alfred has to make a dozen a day. <laughs> <laughs> what else is he doing? Come on, Alfred. Bruce is out there killing Oh, he doesn't vampires. eat cucumber sandwiches no more. <laughs> <laughs> so those are uh, cool, man. I was like, what a cool, like, I don't know. Like, I want to cosplay as vampire Batman just so I can make a, a wooden Batman stick. No, you know? Justin, whoa. <laughs> Come on. Whoa. Get, and get this Matt Ritchie to dress up as uh, Joker. Oh my gosh, it would be perfect because he's taller. That man, Matt Rich is a lanky, tall man. He would go. actually. Oh my gosh, how fun would that be? And so. who could you get as the werecat? <laughs> well, I'll just go down to the 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 local lady hangouts and <laughs> lady see. hangouts. <laughs> um, I I uh, there was there was some dialogue I thought was fun to point out. Mm-hmm. Um, oh gosh, what was his name? Coronado. I forget. Uh, maybe that's I'm, I'm thinking of the Sopranos. Anyways, he was uh, just telling Batman, you know, how he's kind of trying to relate to him and just pissed him off. But he was all yes, because it's everything you've always pretended to be for real. Like, you know, uh, the real thing, baby. <laughs> he's all <laughs> we ain't talking no cola because now you're a vampire bat, a filthy blood junkie. Oh, man, I just I don't know. Again, that. I love the dialogue in this book because there is so many like quotable, like, like quotable, creepy things. Yeah. Here. I should have written them down. I always end up reading and I think, oh, I'll remember this. Mm-hmm. And then I don't remember. Yeah, it, it. It's it's definitely it's definitely hard to to to, you know, remember everything in a story like this. Um, I took a lot of screen caps when I was like, oh, I really like that um, when she. OK, so going back to like just kind of bring a little more attention to the earlier, my earlier comment about the the science of, you know, why, why Mm -hmm. would Selena Kyle turn into a were cat? um, And why does the moon affect it? I loved her explanation. The moon's gravity affects the ocean's tides. And if our bodies are 70% liquid, couldn't the moon create tides within us? So there's some substance in the bloodstream, hormones, enzymes, or adrenaline in criminals and lovers and the venom in victims of were beasts. And it was like, when there's a full moon, crime rises, right? Ask the police department. She was telling him, and he's like, that's not, you know, confirmed, whatever, you know, like, and then even lovers become more amorous when there is a full moon. Like it does something. And I was like, oh man, that, that really, that was a, a cool like explanation, especially in the confines of this story of like why those things would happen in, you know, why, you know, Catwoman did bring peace to to Batman during this like this moment in time. So I, you know, I, I like that. You know what you made me think of though? What? Dwight Schrute. <laughs> I wish I could right. menstruate. If I could menstruate, I wouldn't have to deal with idiotic calendars anymore. I'd just be able to count down <laughs> for my previous cycle. Plus, I'd be more in tune with the mood and the tides. <laughs> Oh my! So you can remember that. <laughs> you can't I remember the lights in the books. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, that's really funny, man. That tells you that's that really I've, funny. I've watched a, I've watched a few episodes of The Office in my day. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. But, Dang. Yeah. Joker does blow out into a, a very David Bowie mullet here at the end of yeah, one eighty yeah. three. He's just all right. He's ready to, you know. I love the the really small touches they do outside that the red rain is still going. Yeah. You know, and especially when Joker is running at the, for the, the end there, he's running toward the church. I think that's when they, when they call it out even and mm-hmm. say of the, of the red rain and you see little, little splotches. Um, yeah. It's cool. I like it. Yeah. Um, yeah. You want to, you want to head into some favorites? Yeah, let's go. Favorites. Right. I don't have a, a transition here yet, so we can just do it we ourselves. Need, we need that, dude. Favorites, favorites, favorites. Favorites, <laughs> favorites, favorites. Hey, Justin, what's your favorite yes. part of Batman Bloodstorm? Oh, my favorite part of Batman Bloodstorm. Are you talking about section of the story or overall, like scene? Um, yeah, part, I, I, however I actually, you interpret part. Well, for this, I really I like the confrontation between Batman and Joker. Uh, that those are always good. I just like the, 
I like the teasing between them. You know, the Batman and Joker confrontations aren't always the most physical. That's not what makes them great. You know, like Killing Joke, you do have that really fun beat down thing, but it's their dialogue at the end, right? That's kind of like what what encapsulates why people love it. It's the it's the you know the mano y mano side of stuff. Um, so I like Batman and and Joker kind of like coming to terms in the church and Joker like how come these things aren't hurting you? And he's getting disappointed. You, you can't have all the strengths of a blood bat and none of the weaknesses, right? Mm -hmm. You can't have those things. Um, you know, and it's, you know, it's Batman again, lamenting, but I can, thanks to the selfless love of a woman that you killed, (laughs) you know? And so (laughs) I love the confrontation at the end. I actually liked it better than the one with Dracula. The one with Dracula was a little like, like it was kind of like, uh, of course, okay, that's what you did here. It was cool. There was there was passion in why, you know, they had to come to their ends. And in the end, I mean, Joker actually won this. He, jo- Batman did exactly what the Joker wants him to do. Gave yeah. in. And mm-hmm. he gave in at the end. Spoilers. But um so yeah, I really loved the confrontation at the end with them. Uh, I thought this... it was an earned it was an earned like yeah, crescendo to the the battle. So. Nice. Uh mine might sound a little weird. But it's the uh, Selena getting uh, chased by the dude and then gets bit. Because I just think that that plays out like old horror. Like that's a creepy scene. That's a good looking. It's a good looking scene. It's somewhat like German expressionistic (laughs) a little bit. (laughs) Mm -hmm. (laughs) That's not what I meant. (laughs) But then like close ups of the dude in the in the shadows, you just see his eyes and then you just see part of his face and then the yeah, uh, her running from him and you just see his silhouette and stuff and the the three panels as you see him changing forms and stuff. I think that's mm-hmm. done really well. And then like we said, the rough uh yep. biting the biting of her is pretty vicious and stuff. So I just think like, damn, that is a that's a creepy ass scene, man. That looks yeah. Creepy. Well it's her scary. exposition's great. I, I actually am glad you did that because she's like, I don't hear footsteps. And it's kind of the the thing where vampires just show up. Oh yeah. You don't hear mm-hmm. them. And all of a sudden you see them and you needed her exposition to bring you the terror of that, that, that situation. So, oh yeah, I agree. That, that was, that was a really good scene yep. and his laughing <laughs> like it's on the wall. <laughs> He's a bastard. He's a bastard. So, uh, how about a yeah. favorite, a favorite panel? Okay. So I'm glad you brought that up. There's not a <laughs> single splash page in this entire book. Not nuts. There's no spot. There's nothing. Okay. No splash page. I thought I missed no, it because no sp- I just read Red Rain again, and that, of course, instantly I can think of when he's fighting all like the zombie vampires yeah. and stuff. That's a full page. And I'm like, wait, there's none of it. Am I not seeing what? There's none of it here. But there's a panel okay. that I love, my friend Ryan. <laughs> there's a panel that I love. Okay. And it is, it's when he is talking to Ariana, mm-hmm. Ariana, Aaron A, whatever the crap her name is. So. <laughs> and, um, I was so like we were talking about making t-shirts and I was like, I want this to be a t-shirt that I only wear on Halloween. (laughs) This is what I want. And it is, oh man, I don't know the page because, okay, it's 157 page 157. It's the second panel and it's Batman. He's, she's like just talking to him. Like she says a very well, but first a question of my own, am I in danger right now? And he's like, no. And she's all, are you? And he's all, yes. (laughs) And like the panel is just like his, his hands clenched like his mouth wide open, like fangs just burying and then like, you know, drool sweat, exaggerated like, ears on that cowl. Yeah. And I'm like, that's such a freaking cool panel. And I want that to be in black and white. I'm going to do this today and I'm going to send it to you and you can, yes. you can do put it. it out with the show do it. <laughs> next week. Do it. Um, <laughs> this is the main event. I'm bringing main event. <laughs> wow. Yeah, like WrestleMania. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cause that to me, I'm like, Oh, that's the, that's the coolest. Like, panel to me in the whole book because it's like it encapsulates Batman's struggle right there yes I'm Batman and yes I have these desires and you know so you know, I, I love that I love that shot you I know shot. I don't have children but I I feel like every October <laughs> from here mm-hmm. on out you should definitely answer yes like this all the time <laughs> yes dad are, <laughs> are you gonna make us supper turn around yes <laughs> just oh, spit and drool and swear. <laughs> yeah. No, I, don't I, have, I don't know if my kids have ever said the word suffer. <laughs> supper, dinner, dinner dad, food. Supper. I don't know. Well, they're they're gonna. There you go. Supper, dad. Uh, <laughs> my yeah. panel. 
Let's see. I need to find the page number. I just had it, but then I had to go and I had to look at yours. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, it was the Bruce <laughs> Batman's lament. Um, yeah. It says at the bottom of the page 132. Mm-hmm. And it's what I quoted earlier of the death mocks me, life tempts me, thirst haunts me. Uh, it's yeah. the second panel of that that book because I just feel like even if you cut out the dialogue part, it's still strong of him going over that old bridge and the moon up in the sky and the different kind of shades. Um, yeah. I love that. I love that page. Batman love and that moonlight. Page. Yeah. <laughs> um, and that's a good, I mean, that's a good picture of Batman too at the end, the bottom the, the, oh yeah. the vampire shot there. The elongated like, like part of his head. So good stuff. Yeah. Uh, would you like to see this adapted in animation? Yeah. You have a cool idea of if they could do this as like an audio audio show. Yeah, I just, because I, I just like listening the to the dialogue <laughs> that they could build with that and the the constant rain and you know all of that would sound really really cool. But uh, yeah, animated. How would you how would you do it? Oh man, I don't know what I said last time because I know I we either. talked I, about I forget. that. Uh, but here's my new idea. Okay. So whatever I said last time, if it falls in line with this, cool. If not, cool. I would do it as a, I would do three parts, you know, mm-hmm. um, but like one long movie, but in broken down in three parts, because I don't know what this is. This is this year's idea. Next year's idea might be differently. Okay. All right. Um, I would have all of it be, uh, black and white animation. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Um, but each arc has a different color tinge. Um, so like of, red, always mm-hmm. red, always. Right. But in this one, you start bringing in different colors. You'll, you, you can bring in like the purples and greens. You need that. Um, cause I think it's a Joker story, right? I would do that. Um, but you, you always have to adapt and condense. Cause like how do you take three stories and bring them into one thing? And so, um, so yeah, I think I would just do that. I would do a 90 minute film where each part's 30 minutes and you, you condense in as much as possible. And maybe it happens in like a span of a week or something. I don't know. Like it's a short Halloween, not a long Halloween. <laughs> the short Halloween. Yeah. I don't know, man. I, I You can, you can go a whole bunch mm. of different ways, but I, the more I think about th- like the approach here, I, I wish it was just a black and white book. Gotcha. And- okay. With red ink, and that's it. Hmm. Like Batman, black and white, except the blood of Kelly Jones mixed into the paper. <laughs> I, hmm. I don't know that I would do. Well, I'm terrified now, Justin. I don't, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that I could do. I think movies for sure, but I don't know yeah. that I would do three movies. I'd maybe, I'd do two, and yeah. really make that art different from the standard from the status quo. Uh, and maybe stop like, I'm trying to think where would you end the first part then? And maybe end it when mm-hmm. he bites the head of that rat only because that's a good hook of like, Oh snap. He's, he's crossed over. Like now he's actually drinking yeah. blood and then be like, wait, what? And then you continue on with the rest of this story. And the second, they but it has to he be drinks blood. I don't think you can just do it by itself. I think you have to do, you got to do all three, even though I don't remember Crimson Mist. I uh, feel like you got to do all three parts. Yeah. So, yeah, oh, there you go. for sure. How about your final thoughts on Batman Bloodstorm? You will not forget the yeah. title of this book after today. Batman Bloodstorm. Bloodstorm. Uh, I, I think it's a great uh, follow up to a story that didn't need a follow up. Um, mm-hmm. It could, like you said, it could have ended fine. I actually think it's a better ending. Uh, the the battle between Joker and Batman is satisfying. Um, Batman's heartbreak in loneliness is perfectly captured. Um, you know, minus my, my, <clears throat> my preference criticisms. That's really what they are. It's, it's not sure. a bad story. Yeah. I love the storytelling is great. The dialogue's great. Um, it even has, you know, it has a little bumps of humor, obviously with the Joker. Um, but it's terrifying humor and you're like, Oh man, that's terrible. But I'm laughing because it's the Joker, and, you know, and you're supposed to kind of like, he kind of pushes you to be uncomfortable. And so <laughs> you yeah, laugh, uh, but you're not happy that you're laughing. <laughs> yeah. You're like, Oh man, why did I laugh at that? But I, and I do, I, I wish, I wish there was some bigger uh, splash pages in here. Cause that would have been cool. Like a big 
Batman sucking the blood of Joker. Like that was a bigger picture. I don't know why. And the cover's weird. I'll say the cover is weird because it's like that big buff Batman. Like that's mm-hmm. not even in the book. I don't. I don't know. Yeah. So all right. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. I I, I love this story. It's it's good. I, I was it was a f- great uh, story to read during the spooky season for sure. Uh, both yeah. of these so far. We'll see how the third one follows up. But uh, yeah, this is. I mean, it's copy paste what you said. It's a great follow up for a story that didn't need one. And mm-hmm. it's full. I feel like at first it's a full display of Kelly Jones just getting to do what he wants to do. Uh, yeah. But then as as you said at the beginning too, though, of Doug Mensch, he really makes the story work. Um, yeah. So overall, I, it's just a fun Elseworld story that is perfect for this time of year. It's perfect for the moody season. And yes. um, I hope Todd McFarlane gets to making some of them action figures. That's Do this. Right. Come on, Todd. Come on, yeah. Toddy boy. Todd, uh, make it happen. Mr. So, Kowalski. I wish- oh, yeah. go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, the one thing, I, I wish that they just didn't call it Elseworlds Collection 2. <laughs> Yeah, because <laughs> it's, it's definitely a, a trilogy of yeah. the, the so that that's just a weird. Yep. Like collection name, but it's all good. The Batman Dracula trilogy or something. Vampire trilogy, yeah. something like that. Or and, Batman sucks trilogy or for sucks three blood. Books, they need to do a <laughs> like a deluxe edition, collect all three or something like that. It's just waiting for that. Can you add an absolute or I don't know. They need to collect yeah. all three in a nice new hardcover and people yeah. will buy. I'll buy. Yep. I'll be there right away. Oh, leather bound with a Ooh. with a black and white with red. <laughs> <laughs> the hollow, the a Halloween like a like special edition would be cool. Yeah. But yeah. Mm. Uh, thanks for returning to the show, Justin, for this main event. The main event. It's lived up to the hype. You've delivered. Oh, I hope so. I yeah. hope so. You you did a, a flip off the top rope. That's right. Her Karana. <laughs> yes. Uh. If if anybody is interested in following you and they aren't already, mm. why don't you do some plugging? Let them yeah, know how they can uh, do that. Yeah. Plug. You can definitely follow me on Twitter. Um, I guess that's where you follow people. You really don't yeah. follow anybody anywhere else. I mean, Instagram, but like there's pictures of like my kid. And who cares about that? <laughs> um, but yeah, on Twitter, you can follow me at Justin M. Kowalski. Justin M. Kowalski. <laughs> Like the penguins. So <laughs> like the penguins <laughs> of Madagascar, figure that out. Oh my um, gosh. Yes. You, Kowalski. <clears throat> yeah. Um, yeah. And then, uh, yeah. Part of let's go podcast network. Go check us out. Let's go podcast.com. And you can find us on Twitter as well at let's go podcast. All the things that we put out reviews and shows and things like that. So all them goods. All them Excellent. goods. And a, a shout out to you again, sir, that you are um, the, basically award-winning fan favorite logo of the Batman book club was designed by Justin Kowalski. So thank you, well, thank sir, you. for that. My pleasure. You're a hero. My legacy lives on. <laughs> if you'd like to I get, follow... I get 10% of every uh, shirt that Ryan sells. FYI, I don't know if you guys know that. Yep. He's rich. I've, He's rich now. Yeah. He's retired. Millions of dollars already. Retired. Retired. It's a great contract that I signed. <laughs> yeah. Always read the fine print, people. Always oh, read that it. fine print. I have to pay you. <laughs> this is a terrible deal. Boom. What a twist. <laughs> if you'd like to follow the Batman book club, you can on the Twitter at bat, the Batman BC for upcoming episodes, latest episode drops. And sometimes like right now, go to the Batman at the oh. Batman BC. There's a giveaway going on. See how you can enter that. You can also follow on Instagram at the Batman BC. Uh, you can write in with questions or comments or whatever you want to say at all. Um, may start reading some of those questions, uh, like one each episode or something in the future. We'll see about that at the Batman BC at gmail.com. There's also yes. a YouTube channel hoping to have some new stuff coming up there soon. Uh, if you'd like to support the show, like I said at the top, uh, in any way whatsoever, you can in a variety of ways. You can do it through Patreon. It's patreon.com slash the Batman BC. You can also do it through Public, where you can buy uh, all sorts of stuff with that award winning logo on it. But if you'd like to support the show and don't want to spend any money at all, it's 100% A-OK. You can do it by leaving a uh, review and rating the show on Apple Podcasts. The link to that page is in the description of this episode. The more reviews we get, the more it helps spread the word. And as we all know, the word is panic. Panic. Thought you would add. Thank you. So for Justin Kowalski, (laughs) I am Ryan Lauer. And until next time, read more Batman comics. Comics.